Hello, today we are going to be taking a look at interpreting quadratic expressions. So we will look at different quadratic expressions and how to answer different questions about them and analyze the different pieces of them. To start, we want to look at the different types that there are. There are certain key pieces that you want to look at when determining whether you're dealing with a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial. And there's actually part of the word that will help you determine what you're dealing with. So in monomial, we have mono. In binomial, we have bi. And in trinomial, we have tri. So whenever we hear mono, we think of one. So a monomial is an expression that contains just one term. An example of this could be something like 5x. A binomial is going to focus on an expression that contains two terms. So when we see bi, we think two. An example would be something like 2x plus 7. I have two different terms that make that up, the 2x and the 7. A trinomial is going to be an expression that contains three terms. So I put an example here, something like 3x squared minus 24x plus 4, containing three separate terms. You have your 3x squared, your minus 24x, and your plus, uh, plus 4. So when you're looking, you can determine how many terms there are and see which type of expression you're working with on that problem. Another property that comes up in this section is the closure property of multiplication. Now you've probably seen the closure property of addition in earlier lessons. With the closure property of multiplication, what it states is that if you multiply two or more polynomials, your answer will also be a polynomial. So in the past you've seen things, if you take two integers and you multiply them together, that will result in an integer. So if I do something like two times nine equals 18, 2, 9, and 18 would all be examples of integers. When I'm dealing with multiplication, if I have something like x plus 1 times 2x minus 6, I would go and you can FOIL this. So I broke it down into parts here. If you've heard of FOIL, you know first. So I do the first term. So I have x times 2x, which gives me 2x squared. Outer, or outside. I would do x times negative 6, which gives me minus 6x. Inner or inside, positive 1 times 2x gives me 2x and a plus. And then last, so you have 1 times negative 6, which is going to give me negative 6. Now on this next line here, I just took everything we had here and I went and simplified it, combined the like terms that I could. So negative 6x plus 2x would give me negative 4x. And then you want to make it go in order from degree, so I would have 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 would be my answer. So in this case, x plus 1 was a polynomial, 2x minus 6 was a polynomial, and then 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 was also a polynomial. So when I took a polynomial times a polynomial, my end result was also a polynomial. Now just to go back to the vocabulary we went over earlier, x plus 1 would be a binomial because it had two terms. 2x minus 6 would be a binomial because it also had two terms. And 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 would be a trinomial because it had three terms, all of which are different types of polynomials. just means more than one term. In this section, you probably saw there were a lot of real-world examples, and one thing they looked at was how to find the area of different figures, because that's going to require us to use multiplication. So if I gave you this rectangle and asked you to find the area of the rectangle, I have my sides labeled as being 3x minus 6 and x plus 2. Now one thing that you need to remember when dealing with a rectangle is that the volume, or not volume, the area formula, sorry, for a rectangle is length times width. So if I have area equals length times width. And I'm going to go and substitute in my values. So I'd have the area equals length, so I have 3x minus 6 times x plus 2. And this is going to go back to what we went over on the previous slide. When I have two binomials like this, what you're basically doing is you're distributing every term from the first binomial to every term to the second. 
foil, like we said before, was the way that you can do that by going in order and it'll help you set things up. So if I do my first terms, I'm going to have 3x times x, which is going to be 3x squared. I'll put a little square on there. Okay, so we'll have 3x squared. Slide this over so we don't lose our exponent. That's the first terms. Then I would go to the outer terms, which would be 3x times 2, which would be 6x. Then the inside terms, which would be negative 6 times x. And again, always keep the positive negatives together, so you don't want to lose it off the number. So negative 6 times x is going to be a minus 6x. And then the last terms are going to be negative 6 times a positive 2, which is going to be a negative 12. Now we're almost done at this point. We just need to go and simplify what we can. And in this case, there is something that when I combine is going to have something interesting happen. So with this problem now, when I go and I combine my 3x squared plus 6x minus 6x minus 12, the only two parts of that that I can actually put together and simplify are going to be the 6x minus 6x. And when I go to combine those, they're actually going to cancel out because 6x minus 6x is going to be 0. So my final answer for this is going to be 3x squared minus 12. And then if I had the value of x, I'd be able to go and substitute that in. But for right now, that polynomial right there, which in this case is a binomial because it has two terms in the end, would be how I would find the area for this rectangle. So that is the area of the rectangle. It would be 3x squared minus 12. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope it helped you to better understand the expressions um, dealing with different polynomials. Thank you very much.